a beautiful day here in Wolverine, Michigan. It's been a beautiful weekend. It's a beautiful time to come to the Lord on this Sunday. I want to thank everybody that's been praying for this ministry and all the help you have been help giving us. Today's prayer list is a little long one. It's a good thing to pray for people. We get blessed for praying for them, and the people get blessed that we pray for. God does meet their needs. Tim Stock was laid to rest yesterday. Let's keep his family in prayer as they're still sorrowful and mourning for him. Dale Smith, father, was laid to rest a week ago from yesterday. But let's keep Dale and his family members in prayer in this sorrowful time, in their mourning period. Michael Stewart's mother has passed away. Let us keep him and his family in prayer, in comforting prayer. Ashley and her baby are doing better. The baby has not been delivered yet. They're still having complications and she's still in the hospital. Let's keep her in prayer, please. Her and her baby. Christina's granddaughter still needs prayer with the tumors. Jack George still needs prayer as he's in the first stage of Alzheimer's. Let's keep him in prayer. Barb Merchant is going in for back surgery tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Let's keep her in prayer. Jerry Patterson has gotten divorced. He's been asking for prayer. It's a hard time when your life is torn apart. Let's keep both of them in prayer. That God can comfort both of them and meet their needs. Jason Gibbs is still having health problems. Let's keep him in prayer. Carol is back in the hospital with liver problems. She was there last year. Let's keep her in prayer. And let's pray for, pray for our Christmas luncheon this, this year. That every, all the needs will be filled that we have. The supplies, the volunteers, and the people to come eat the food. On that day that we celebrate God's birthday, let us be there for the people who have nobody around. Let us be there for the lonely ones. To give comfort, the fellowship that should be celebrated on that day. Let's go to prayer now. Our God, we thank you for this weekend you have given us. We thank you for spring to show us of new life, a new beginning. God, we ask you to be with Tim, Stockholm, his family, Lord, down here on earth, all of them. Watch over them and comfort them. Be with Ben on his new job, Lord, as he's been hired in. Help him and his wife, Lord, meet your needs. Be with Ashley and her baby, Lord, as you watch over them in the hospital, Lord. Give that baby comfort and her. The feeling that you are there. The love. Be with Christina's granddaughter who has tumors, Lord. Touch her. Be with her, Lord. And the family. Be with Jack George, Lord, as he starts his new life with dealing with Alzheimer's and his family, Lord. Give them all comfort and understanding and wisdom at this time, Lord. 
be with Barb Merchant tomorrow as she goes into surgery, Lord. Be with the surgeons and everyone involved. Watch over her, take care of her, Lord. Be with Jerry Patterson, Lord, as he starts a new life without his wife. Be with the wife and kids and him, Lord. Help them reconcile their love for each other and understanding. In your name, Lord, let this happen. Be with Jason Gibbs and heal him, Lord. Touch his body, the aches, the pains, the bad feeling. Heal him, Lord, this we ask. Be with Carol as she's back in the hospital with liver problems, Lord. Help her and Mike understand give them the will, will, wisdom and understanding and the comfort they need. Be with Mike Stewart and his family as his mother has passed away, Lord. Be with them as they are in their sorrow and mourning, Lord. Let them be comforted by you, Lord. As there is no such words to give down here for comfort, but let them mourn and grieve. And let them believe in you. God, be with us at this service now. Let the Holy Spirit lead us in this sermon today. Let us all learn something and be blessed by this service, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, this we ask. Amen. Last week we talked about leprosy and sin. How sin is leprosy to our soul as leprosy is to our body. Nowadays we have physicians that can treat that. Well, they had physicians back then that could treat it too. Or it could be a gift from God that we're healed. A miracle. But in the Old Testament, when a person was clean, the priest has to go out to them to declare them clean. And one of the things we find out in Le Leviticus 14, 8 and 9 that they had to do. And he that is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes, shave off all his hair, wash himself in water, that he may be clean. And after that he shall come into the camp, and shall tarry abroad out of his tent seven days. Now not verse 9. But it shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave all his hair off his head, his beard, his eyebrows, even all his hair he shall shave off, and he shall wash his clothes, also he shall wash his flesh in water, and he shall be clean. So before he can do anything, the priest comes out, declares it, looks at him, does all the chats, he says, oh yeah, you're clean, you're healed, way to go. You can come back into the camp now. But before you come in, you have to cleanse yourself. You have to wash your clothes. You have to shave everything off. And then you come in, but you can't go into your household yet. You have to tarry for seven days. People have to watch you. People are going to keep an eye on you to make sure you, you're not acting strange or anything. Then seven days, you're going to reshave, shave everything off, wash your clothes again, and wash your flesh. Then you'll be absolutely clean to be in our camp 
and you can go into your household. Well, what does this represent today? Well, we know Jesus is our priest. And we know he'll come to us no matter where we are. Because the Bible says he knocks at the door. All we got to do is answer it. So he's coming to our door to heal us, to make us clean, to be that physician, to clean our body, to rid of our sins. That's what Jesus does. But moreover, once he heals us, he's also the priest that declares us clean to God. So we can go to heaven. So what does the clothes represent in the Old Testament? The clothes represent the old life. Things that we used to do. Things that were sinful that we don't want to do anymore. Things that we are ashamed of that we don't want to do anymore. And shaving off the hair of the body shows us that he or she is starting with a new body. A new way of life. We want to follow Jesus. Ever notice when you got saved or somebody else? Because when we get saved, we're overjoyed, we're excited, we're bubbling over. We're not watching us. But if you watch somebody that just got saved, they want to do it all. They're so thankful, they're jumping for joy. They're excited. They want to do so much for God. But before that happens, before he can be allowed in home, into the camp, he has to be watched seven days by everybody. And that's what we should be doing with these new believers. We should be watching them. So many churches nowadays, you're saved, then you want to become a member, and then they start everything. They want to put you in charge of stuff. Well, that's good in a way, but it's bad too. Because once you lose, a day or two later, you're back out in the world, you're doing your stuff, you're saying everyday job. That bubbliness feel starts to fade away a little bit. People don't want to hear that, especially the people that you hung around with. The old people. Your old lifestyle. They're kind of like, yeah, good for you, but keep it to yourself. A lot of them are that way. So we have to watch these new believers. We have to be there for support for these new believers. Because as they leave their friends, or I should say their friends leave them, who's going to be there to help them? We need to step in. They're starting a new life. They got a new camp. We're in that camp. We're supposed to help them. Matthew 7, 16 says, You shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? No, we're not supposed to judge people, but we are supposed to watch them. What are they doing? What are their actions? Are they godly or ungodly? Are they working for the Lord or are they working for the world? What are they producing? Are they producing more for themselves than for God? I'm not saying you have to go 100% for God. Once you're saved, God has a plan for you. Most 
likely he ain't going to tell me what it is. He just wants me to be there to help you find out what it is. John 15.3 ye ye, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. John 17.17 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy, tr thy word is truth. We are supposed to be there to help them. And how do we help them? Through God's word. They are cleaned by reading the Bible. By studying the Bible. Learning it. Holding on to it. And we are supposed to be there to help them. We are not there just on Sundays to watch them stand up in front of the church, clap, say hallelujah. We got one saved. We didn't do anything. Jesus saved him. Jesus saved us. We should celebrate because we have a brother and sister in the family now. And what do we do with that brother or sister? Is it like in the world? We leave them alone? Let them do their own thing? Well, we do our own thing? No! We are here to help them grow into God's word. God's way. Each one God has a plan for. Each one will do something special for God. And that special thing might not be a preacher, might not be a teacher. It just might be somebody going to work, by his action, lead somebody out, without them knowing it, to God. You don't have to stand up in front of somebody to be special for God. Just like in every church, there are janitors. There are people who come in and clean. Clean that church spotless. Do you ever think when you're in church, when you use the restroom, how clean it is in there? You ever say thank you to who done it? Do you even know who does that kind of stuff? Do you know who does any of the yard work out there? Who dusts? Who cleans? God uses everybody different. And it takes everybody to bring people to God. Jesus is our priest. Jesus does the cleansing. He also tells us when we are sinful. But he's also there to give us, to shower us in his blood, his holy blood, to make us clean. So we can come camp with him and God. We have to remember what God is, who God is. Every day, every minute, every second of our lives, we have to remember We have to remember that we are sinful people. That we have to go and cleanse ourselves daily. Just like you wash after you work. You have a hard day, you want to get clean. We have to get rid of all the sins in our lives, and we do that by confessing them to Jesus Christ. We get down, we humble ourselves, and we ask forgiveness. This is what Jesus wants from us. It doesn't matter who we are, how big we are in the world, or how little we are. God wants us. God wants to use us for his purpose. We can
can tell people by their fruits, by what they do, what they talk about, what they really enjoy in life, of how great a person they are. If they're for Jesus or if they're of the world. Only through cleaning ourselves can we get to know Jesus. Sanctifying through the word, the truth of the word. If you just stay home, go to work, and don't read the Bible, and don't ask Jesus to come in your life, don't expect to go to heaven. If you do go to decide you want to go to heaven, and you go to church, or you read your Bible and get saved that way, praise God. But when it comes judgment time, and that's all you've done, that's all the fruit you have bore, don't expect much. But if you work hard for Jesus Christ, you go out and gather fruit for him, do hard labor for him, you will be rewarded. The Bible tells us. And the more we study the Bible, the more we believe it and trust in it, the stronger we are in Christ. The stronger we'll be to show people that God is real. That Jesus is real and knocking at their door to save them. So they can shave, wash, and put on a new set of clothes. A new life. A better life. So this is what I have to say today. Jesus is knocking. Jesus wants you to be cleansed. He wants you to shave, start a new life. He wants you to get rid of your old clothing and put on his clothing. I can't say it enough, but time is running out. I have stated my purpose today to show you that Jesus is real. God is real. And that we need to watch and help new believers. To help them grow in the Bible. As we start a new week, as new problems and old problems come upon us, as we leave refreshed knowing that Jesus has saved us, or that we want to be saved by Jesus. I'm going to say two ending prayers today. The first one for people who want to be saved, and the second one to close the service. Christ Jesus, my Savior, I come upon you now and ask that you forgive all my sins, that you search my soul for all the sins that are upon me, that you cleanse me, Lord, as a physician would heal me. I ask you to wash me in your blood, the blood of the Savior, the one born of the Virgin Mary, of a virgin birth, the one who lived and taught, the one who died on a cross just for me, for those sins that I committed, Lord, I ask you to forgive them. And I thank you for the punishment of you going to hell, Lord, for three days and defeating Satan, that you rose and went to heaven and now are sitting on the right hand side of God. Looking out for me, Lord, I ask you to forgive my sins, 
Come unto me, bring me the Holy Spirit. This I ask in Christ Jesus' name. Jesus, we start a new week. I ask you to be with the people we prayed for. I ask you for, to be with the people who have not sent a prayer request in, but need help, Lord, healing, wisdom, or understanding. Lord, I ask you to be with us all this week as we wait until next week to come back to you, Lord, and have another service to fellowship with you, God. Be with us and guide us and protect us all. This we ask in Christ Jesus' name.